This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're in Las Vegas for a huge fight week. In fact, the last time I was joined by Max Kellum was a long time ago. It was on Crawford Khan fight week in New York. How are you doing, Max? Okay, how are you? Yeah, very good, thanks. Uh, yeah, appreciate your time, firstly. Yeah, as I said, a huge fight week. Uh, Terence Crawford, in what people are saying, is his toughest challenge at either 140, 147. Would you go along with that? Oh, yeah. I mean, Crawford, through the only fault of his own is that he's been so good that people haven't been anxious to jump in with him. But Crawford has been denied big fights by the likely opponents in, in different weight, well, especially at welterweight. You know, and so this is the first time a guy has crossed the street, so to speak, to fight him. And, you know, much like Triple G, when he was kind of the boogeyman of the middleweight division, but... Um, he hadn't really beaten a top guy because he just couldn't get those fights. People started looking around with Triple G and said, who's the type of dude who will fight, who will get in and make a big, Canelo would do it. We all thought Canelo would do it, and then he did it. But we expected that to be a launching pad for Triple G. It wound up a launching pad for Canelo. So, like, here there's this sense that Porter is willing to step up and fight Crawford, and this is going to launch Terrence Crawford. But Sean, and it might, but Sean Porter has other ideas. Like, Sean Porter thinks this is the fight that launches him. Who would you want to see Terrence box next should he be successful this Saturday night? It's the number one fight in combat sports. The number one fight in combat sports is Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence. That's the number one fight. in the Let's just rule out Errol because of his injury situation for now. Would you like to see Josh Taylor, perhaps? Well, that would be excellent, except that Josh is 140 pounds. And I think even if, they were, even if Terrence was still at 140, people would favor Terrence over Josh. So, so for Terrence Crawford, should he beat Porter, and especially should he win convincingly, you, and, and you can't get a Spence fight, then another guy's either going to have to cross the street, right? Or he has to start looking north to make a big fight at 54 in order to find the kind of opponent where people going in just don't think, hey, this is a nice name on the resume. But going in, people are like, I wonder who wins this. This is a 50-50 kind of fight. Okay. As you said, we're, we're pressed for time, so I'm going to run through some topics. We've heard that Canelo uh, looks like he will be moving up to cruiser, cruiserweight to face Anunga Makabu. The WBC approved that. What do you think about Canelo's jump up to cruiserweight? Well, good for him. He wants to fight a world-class cruiserweight. Canelo started at 154 pounds. So that's a great accomplishment if you go up and beat a world-class cruiserweight. It doesn't make you cruiserweight champion. It doesn't mean you're taking on the number one guy in the division. But it means you have a good win at a, at a much higher weight than, than you started. But what that makes me think is, okay, great Canelo, who's obviously willing to fight King Kong, right? Canelo. If you're willing to actually fight King Kong, well, at 175 pounds, that guy's better be if. I mean, Bivol stylistically may be even tougher, right? But in terms of the kind of action it would produce, better BF just wants you to stand right there so he can come and get you. And Canelo just wants you to come to him so he can get you, you know? So it's, it's the guy's strength playing into the guy's strength. And I think is, other than Crawford Spence, the fight I'd most like to see in combat sports would be better Biev and Canelo. And so if Canelo, he fought Kovalev at 75, now he wants to fight Cruiser. Canelo, get in there with better Biev. Also at the convention, we saw that the WBC have not ordered Tyson Fury and Dylan White. That was expected to happen. What did you make of that, Max? Of Tyson Fury and who? Dylan White. Yeah, that's a listen. I mean, we all saw they were there. That was going. Dylan White pulls out. He can't exactly prove it's an injury. Maybe it isn't an injury. But, you know, if Canelo's, it's a Canelo, if, if Fury's already beaten the other guy in the White matchup, and White would be a really nice biding his time fight, especially in England, um, and, and, and White is one of the top, let's say, five heavyweights in the world, yeah, people want to see that fight. I'm glad it'll get made. And, um, and, you know, nothing against the lean, right? But we've seen that already, and I'd like, to see, I'd like to see White get his shot at Tyson Fury. Okay. Well, that hasn't been ordered, so who would you like to see Tyson Fury box next? Considering Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk are locked in this rematch, who is there for Fury? Well, I, I, there's White, and then there's the winner of that fight. Biggest story to me recently is Tyson Fury telling, saying to Anthony Joshua, or putting it out there, that he, along with Sugar Hill, would train Anthony Joshua for the Usyk rematch. The problem, of course, is if Anthony Joshua were to, were to accept that, he's putting himself in the role of student, and that kind of diminishes him fighting Tyson Fury, where he'd be a pretty big underdog against Tyson Fury anyway at this point. But it would be really interesting to see, and, and I'll bet you Tyson Fury and Sugar Hill could 
help Joshua beat Usyk in the rematch. I would bet on Joshua if those guys trained him. Yeah. I do want to close off on Anthony Joshua. Um, let's say Tyson Fury doesn't train him, Max. Mm -hmm. How much of a chance do you give Joshua in this rematch? He has, look, jo Joshua has a good chance because he's a big, strong guy. And, and he has a good basic overall package of skills. If you look at his actual has heavyweight, if you look at all the heavyweights' resumes, Tyson Fury has clearly the best high-end wins. But Joshua has the deepest heavyweight resume. He's beaten the most good heavyweights. And Usyk is, I never thought that was an easy fight for Joshua. I thought Usyk had certainly had chances, and he did it. But the way you beat a guy like that, you're not going to outbox him. If you're waiting on him, and he's initiating, and he's fainting you into counters, and then he's countering the counter, you're going to lose that fight. Joshua has to impose his size, strength, youth, go to the body. He has to be willing to take certain risks. And if he does that, that's a winnable fight for him. And my last question is about Anthony Joshua. Again, he did an interview with us where he said he's not clear about what he wants to do next. His suggestion is he might leave Rob McCracken. Eddie Reynoso has come out and said that he'd happily train him. Obviously, he did a load of gym visits in the States. What have you made of that situation with uh, Anthony? Yeah, uh, Reynoso right now, if you have to say who's the best trainer in boxing, he probably has the best case. Eddie's done a great job, not just with Canelo. Eddie works with a guy, and you see clear improvement. And so, uh, yeah, he'd be, if, if Joshua went with Eddie, I think the boxing world would anticipate, if not in their first fight together, because sometimes you've got to take a step back to take two forward, certainly going forward, I would anticipate a better Anthony Joshua. And that's pretty good. I mean, Anthony Joshua, people criticize him because he lost to Andy Ruiz, who's a very unusual heavyweight. Let's not forget... He almost decapitated Ruiz in that fight. Ruiz came back to win the fight, and then Joshua won the rematch. And as I said, he's beaten a lot of good fighters. He had a classic heavyweight fight with Klitschko. Oh, Klitschko was old. Klitschko would have beaten, you know, most guys who ever lived on that night. He's a big, strong, very highly skilled, experienced heavyweight champion. And Joshua knocked him out and had to come off the deck to do it. And not to mention uh, guys like Joseph Parker and a lot of guys like that. So, so if the guy's already fighting on that level, you know, Olympic super heavyweight gold medalist, and, and then you pair him with a great trainer, maybe the best in the business, over time you would expect him to reach an even higher level. Max Kellerman, I really appreciate your time on IFL TV. We look forward to a great night on Saturday night, ESPN Plus pay-per-view in the States, of course Sky Sports in the UK for Crawford Porter. So quick prediction? I like Crawford on points in a war. Thank you very much, Max.